All right. Good morning, uh, and uh, welcome to this video on the Wheatstone uh, Bridge Principle. See, Wheatstone Bridge Principle is uh, itself based on KCL and KVL. So I'm just drawing the, you know, how as a concept Wheatstone Bridge, uh, you know, appears. So if you can see, I'm drawing a, you know, a square shape or and then there is a resistance here so this is your P Q R S and then what you have in the Wheatstone bridge is uh, you know external uh, battery which is driving the current in this circuit so this is a battery which is driving the current and the current you know splits here and it splits here and then again at this uh, node, the current splits, right? And the balance current goes again at this, you know, the current gets added up due to KCL, adds up and then the total current comes out. So if this is your current I1, this is your current I2, and the splitting happens here, then, you know, for example, in this branch, the current is I3, and net outgoing will be I1 minus I3. And here, for example, you know, due to KCL, it will be I2 plus I3. So the total current which is coming out of this is I1 minus I3 plus I2 plus I3. So it is I1 plus I2, which is nothing but I total. Right? So I total has been split like I1 plus I2. And at the output junction also, it is I output. Now, this is our battery EMF. Now, so far what we have done is only current splitting and uh, shown five resistors P, Q, R, S, and maybe you know you can call this a T resistor. Now, Wheatstone bridge principle, you know, which as you can clearly see is based on you know Kirchhoff's current law so far. What you do is you apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop. Then you apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop. And then what you do is you apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop. Now this ensures that almost all the you know electrical uh, elements of the circuit, including this battery, you know, also gets included as part of the KVL. So you what you do is you end up writing three KVL. For example, I'll just write the Kirchhoff's voltage law for loop number one. So it will be minus P into I1 minus I3 into T and plus because the loop and the current direction in resistor R which is this is opposite so it will become gain I2 into R and this is your equation number one the sum of gains and sum of losses uh, in a loop is equal to zero. Then you can apply your Kirchhoff's voltage law in uh, the branch number Q, which is resistor Q, and you can see the direction of loop and current is same. So it's I1 minus I3 multiplied by Q. And then you can see T again, uh, the loop direction is uh, clockwise, but the current is in opposite direction. So minus S into I2 plus I3 and in I3 again it is minus sorry it is plus because current is downward in T and the loop is moving upward so T into I3 is equal to 0 and let's apply the KVL in loop number 3 now so if I start moving in loop number 3 you know this is my battery and you can see it's a gain in potential so plus if I go to R you know, it's again plus I2 into R. Let me move forward in this. And, uh, no, in R, if you see the loop, it's a loss because it's a loop 3, so this is negative. And let's move, uh, so it will be minus I2 plus I3 into S. So I'm here at this moment, you know, here. And this will be equal to zero. So you have, you know, three equations: one, two, three. And uh, 
Now, this, so far what you have done in, in Wheatstone is KCL and KVL. So Wheatstone Bridge circuit analysis you know, of a Wheatstone Bridge circuit is based on KCL and KVL. Now what's so special about Wheatstone is that if you put you know the potential between A and B you know is equal to zero which means you put the potential between B A B is equal to zero and use this condition in the first KVL, in the second KVL and third KVL if you put this what you will find is that there is no current flowing in the resistor T so your circuit you know which is this you know actually has no resistor in T so you will have no current I'm sorry you will have no current here and the circuit therefore you can remove this uh, resistance from the circuit and the circuit then you know becomes reduced to this yeah. this is what the circuit finally reduces to so this is the principle of Wheatstone bridge the bridge I have just talked about where you know, the potential of VA and VB the two points is equal is called a balanced condition of uh, Wheatstone bridge. So it's a what we've discussed is a balanced Wheatstone bridge. Okay. So there are two types of uh, Wheatstone bridges. One is the balanced, and the other is unbalanced. If this condition, which is V A B is equal to zero, does not exist, which means the point A and B you know have a potential difference then such a bridge is called as an unbalanced Wheatstone bridge so when you do a numerical of uh, Wheatstone bridge you know, just don't be you know, carried away by the fact that you know you can straight away write that you know if you solve all these three and apply this condition what you get is P by R is equal to Q by S right this is only applicable for a balanced bridge so be very careful when you apply the you know KVL and KCL and this condition of P by R is Q by S is not valid then the bridge is an unbalanced bridge in that case you cannot put the current in the arm AB to be zero so just be very careful that this I3 you know, will not be zero in an unbalanced bridge and you will have to use your standard KVL KCL method to find the current. But generally, Wheatstone uh, bridge is used only in the conditions of balance, uh, where the current in the arm AB is zero. I hope you found this useful. You know, you can go through this uh, complete you know, three equations of KVL. Put I3 is equal to zero because there is no current in uh, the arm AB. So we derive the expression that P by R is equal to Q by S. Thank you very much.